How's it going? Um, today's video, we're going to keep going on the IAC driver buzz, and I'm going to expand a little bit more on um, using kind of a trigger MIDI clip to actually trigger parameters in Automate um, various aspects of Live. Now, again, you can do this within Live, obviously, using parameter automation and whatnot, but um, this is a, this is just a, an alternative method um, to hopefully spark some ideas and show you a new interesting way of doing it. Um, so I've put together this, this little tune here, which we'll just play from the start. Very, very, very simple. Um, this live pack is available uh, on my website. Um, it's all um, basically just using operators to synthesize everything. So if you've got the operator prop plug in, then that'll be sufficient. So what we've got is a tune. You see, we've got some drums, we've got some white noise, we've got some pads, keys, a lead, sub bass, a bass here, and this trigger clip. Now all this automation that you can hear on this operator channel is actually all happening because of this trigger clip here. Now you'll see this trigger clip is a MIDI clip and you can see the output of the MIDI is going to the IAC driver bus um, as I explained earlier in the other videos which you should check out if you haven't already. So the MIDI out of this track of this MIDI clip, these MIDI clips, is sending out of Ableton back into Ableton again which means we can use this to automate anything within these um, channels here. And so I'll, I'll go through and show you what I've actually done here. We'll just start it on, um, where should we start it? We'll start it here, and I'm just going to loop this section of the tune. So let's have a listen again. Let's just solo this again, and make sure we solo the trigger track so the automation is happening. Now if we look into this track, first you'll see I've got some notes here. So we've got C3 and uh, C sharp. These notes are assigned to the um, on and off device, on and off messages of the filter delay and the flanger, which go after the operator of this bass line that I've got. So if we go into the MIDI map mode, you'll see here we've got um, C1. Um, sorry, we've got note C3, and over here we've got note C sharp 3. This turns the filter delay on, which I've just used as a simple little widening thing to give those bass hits a little bit of space. And then the flanger comes on um, at the end of the the phrase to give that uh, long sweeping note a bit of a a bit of a um, flange. So let's let's just have a listen and watch how this works. See how that filter delay is turning off and on, and now the flanger, the filter delay again. So you can use these notes to trigger. Um, devices off and on, really really good. Just make sure that you have two of them for when you want it to go on and off. And you'll see right down at the end here I've put a, a note off, or a, a, just a note at the very very end just so it uh, turns the flanger off um, because if we had it here it wouldn't pick it up, it would leave the flanger on. Okay, so um, excellent, let's copy that across. And um, so that's good. What we've also got going on here though is we've got these four controllers here, these four MIDI CC value messages sending out. So if I select one of these, you see we've got some automation here. So this is simply just going from 0 to 127, it's sending out just CC1, but CC1 is actually assigned, if we go and have a look in the MIDI mode, to the um, frequency of the auto filter. So that's going to create a... Let's look at that line again. Very cool. Um, if we have a look in here, what have we got? We've got number two. This is again, here's some automation here. So this is sending um, CC value two. And CC value two, if we go over here and look at the MIDI, is assigned to the level of the operator B, which is giving it a little bit of a FME kind of grunge. Let's watch that. <laughs> Very, very cool. Notice I had the flanger on by accident there. We just got to make sure it's off each time we start playing. Um, if we look at CC value number three, we have that assigned to the um, send B return send. So this will send the uh, baseline to send B, which of course I have a ping pong delay set up. Also, I have a, a redux after the ping pong delay, which has CC value number four. And if we have a look in here, you'll see that CC value number four has a very, very small um, ramp moving upwards. So what's going to happen is when that CC three goes up, it's going to send the note which is currently playing on this 
baseline to the ping pong delay and then the CC4 value is going to slowly but reduce it, uh, reduce it, redux it, whatever you call it, um, which will give it an, the delay and that nice little tail. So let's have another listen. <laughs> And you can hear that crunching down. So that's all I've really done for that. Um, you'll notice over here at the very, very start, it's it's still doing that. But if we go and look at the one value, I've just um, highlighted everything and dragged it down a bit so it's not as intrusive. If we bring it up. And we're just keeping that down nice and low. That's all good. And just um, finally, as we move through, um, we've got some start it here and this is where our lead comes in and you can see that this uh, this line is moving up and down there's no actual automation happening on the line I mean there's no points around like this it's actually moving by itself of that because if we go and look into this value we're now using controller number five to change the rate of the LFO which is assigned to the filter giving it that nice kind of uh, LFO I don't know what, you, what would you call that that, that kind of nice filtery sweeping sound Now if we were to hit record, it just makes sure record is off, um, you're not arming the MIDI track. If we hit record here, it's actually going to record that parameter sweep in for us. I mean, you don't have to do that, but that's just another option which you can do. Now the cool thing about this is this means that we've got one entire track which is now our automation track um, so we can create as many loops as we want and change those parameters um, as much as we want so if I was to play this again we'll load up this let's move this around let's make it a bit like so and of course we can actually you know do as many of, of, of these as we want let's copy these we can go into session view and we can paste them as tri as as um as clips so if you were actually doing this in a live set situation you could have all your automation one and and, and so on you can have your various different clips for the various types of automation that you figured out that you like um really cool way to have access to a, a library of ways of mucking with a certain sound in a live situation which has a lot lots of parameters but you don't really um you don't really have enough hands to turn all those knobs or push all those buttons. Um, it's also a really, really neat way of having um, perimeter automation in session view. Um, so that's 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 it for this one. Um, just just really, really expanding on the um, on the how you can use it to automate various various things. Um, this this live pack again, you can go and download this, dig into it for yourself, play around with it. It's all very very simple. Just a little tuner put together, and yeah, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Talk awesome dot com